And welcome to the postseason edition of And They're Off. We've got baseball playoffs going. We've got the Super Bowl of horse racing just a couple of weeks away. First, though, we're going to talk about a couple of horses that won't be making it to the Breeders' Cup. Steve Haskin, something's going on in Europe this week, right? Uh, you tear my heart when you put it that way. Yes, there is something going on in Europe, and I have very uh, ambivalent feelings about it. You know, on one hand, the Frankel farewell uh, is a very special event, and the fans are going to go crazy over there uh, when he spread eagles his field once again and wins by some ridiculous <laughs> margin, and it's going to be wonderful, and the, uh, the English racing fans are going to go nuts. They're going to hail him as, you know, the greatest horse of all time. But I have to shake my head. I just shake my head in dismay that this horse is not coming for the Breeders' Cup. And it has nothing to do with uh, being an American and a horse should come to America. If you name a horse Frankel, you have to come to the United <laughs> States to run him in the shadow of his namesake. You, you know what this, was, this would be like? This would be like the Breeders' Cup being run at the Curra and Coolmore naming a horse Vincent O'Brien and only running him in the United States. <laughs> Be like shooting and they're off without you, Steve. Uh, that's what oh. it would be like. <laughs> uh, the second uh, horse uh, that will not be running in the Breeders' Cup that we're talking about today just arrived in Maryland yesterday. He's a perfect example of why we love this sport. Uh, recovering from several serious illnesses, Painter arrived at the uh, Fair Hill uh, Medical uh, Center yesterday. Steve was there. Uh, Steve, how is Painter doing, and uh, what was it like seeing him over there? Uh, he's doing great, and it was just fantastic being there and, and seeing him in the flesh and get off the van. I mean, you just sh should have seen him when he arrived. He was bright-eyed and frisky, and he, he, he rarely stopped eating once he settled into his stall. I mean, as soon as they put him in his stall, he just started wolfing down his, his straw before they brought the, uh, they brought the hay out. And then once they brought the hay out, he just was eating nonstop. They were feeding him mints. He was drinking a lot of water. Just seemed like a happy horse. He was sniffing the horse behind him through a little crack in the, in the wall. Um, it's, just, uh, it's just a great, great thing that's happened with this horse. And I think he's a perfect example how the courage and heart of a thoroughbred doesn't need to be demonstrated on the racetrack. It, it can be demonstrated just as well off the racetrack and, and he's proven that. I think it's just a great story and everybody says what a tough horse he is. Baffert will tell you how tough he is. The people at New Bolton tell you how tough he is and I, and I believe that it was that toughness that enabled him to get through uh, this ordeal. And I just have to make a quick statement about the place where he is, the uh, Fairhill Equine Therapy Center. I mean not only is this a remarkable state-of-the-art facility uh, complete with a hyperbaric chamber and an aqua treadmill, which is incredible to watch these horses on this treadmill, and a saltwater spa. But uh, Bruce Jackson and his wife Amy, who, uh, who, who own the place, and the entire staff are so dedicated to the horses, and it just makes for a wonderful environment for the horses, and it's just a great place to, uh, to be and just experience all that. A lot of fans out there of Painter, of course, the Haskell winner, the Belmont runner-up, and uh, a lot of cause for optimism. Uh, if not for a continued racing career, then at least for uh, his continued uh, presence among us. So best of luck to the Zayats and Painter. Steve and I have been talking for a couple of shows now about how great the distaff field is shaping up for the Breeders' Cup. One filly we haven't mentioned is Groupie Doll, who's perhaps under the radar because she's a sprinter. Uh, since Derby Day last year when she won the Humana Distaff, she has turned in one breathtaking race after another. Steve, are you a groupie doll groupie? <laughs> How could you not be? Since he put the blinkers on her, she's four for four on dirt, on poly, on tapita, She's won two grade ones and two grade twos. She's run three triple-digit buyers. Before this race, before, excuse me, before the blinkers, she was four for 11, only had one grade three stakes win at Ellis Park and one triple-digit buyer, and that was 100. 
I mean, it's just amazing what this Philly has turned into with, with, with the Blinkers. She's just become one of the most exciting Phillies she, to watch. She, and you look at her, mar- and, and, and on top of that, she's won her four races by an average margin of five lengths. She's spectacular, and she's spectacular to look at in the paddock. She knows what's going on. She will stop and stare at you. Uh, amazing, amazing Philly. We caught up with her trainer, owner, and breeder, Buff Bradley. Here's our chat with Buff Bradley. What, what is it like for you to have a keg of dynamite like that sitting in the barn with the Breeders' Cup coming up a couple of weeks away? Well, it's, it's really exciting, and, and as you know, it's a, a family affair thing, and so we're really pumped up about it. We're, we're, um, we're set to go. Were, were you somewhat amazed by the race at Keeneland? I mean, she was trapped uh, for so long in the stretch. And she still managed to draw off by six and a half. Yeah, she, um, you know, I thought that she might be in a little trouble turning from home. It looked like they were bunching up and maybe not a spot for her to go to. But I think when she stuck her head through there, they kind of they kind of moved out of her way because they knew she was coming through. And uh, I tell you, the way she accelerated down the stretch, that was uh, that would give you chills. And I think for my father, that was a, a very big win for him. Um, you know, winning at Keeneland and, and the race like that, um, it was pretty exciting. Yeah. Steve? You know, I, you know, I've never seen such a dramatic improvement in a horse with, with blinkers added. I mean, what, what exactly did the blinkers do for her? I mean, she was just a, a nice filly before that, and now she's turned into an absolute monster. Well, she, she was a very nice filly. We just got to get her in her races a little bit earlier because it seems like every time she got beat, there was uh, there was a problem. She just wasn't she wasn't going very good early on. And um, I tell you what, I think the Blinkers got her in the races a little bit earlier. Um, even though you know she can still be a little farther back, but I think she starts a little sooner with them. And she always breaks well, but she just doesn't have that uh, third or fourth jump out of there. She's just not going with. It. So I think the Blinkers have really kind of put her in the race a little bit more that way and, and got her focused a little earlier in the race um, because she always knew what to do at the end of the race. When she was going to win, you could tell she was she was blowing. You know, she's also shown an incredible turn of foot as well. And the Blinkers responsible for that aspect of her as well? Yeah, I really think so. I mean, um, but, I, you know, I Gulfstream, I worked her um, uh Rajiv worked her, and she went in 46 and change at Gulfstream, and, and he never sat down on her. And he said, and that's the first time he was on her, he says, we're going to Breeders' Cup with this filly. And <laughs> yeah. I kind of I laughed at him, like, yeah, whatever. But Buff, you mentioned before, it's a real mom-and-pop operation. Uh, you and your dad, Fred, uh, pretty much built your farm in Frankfurt. You put up all the fencing yourself. You carved out a little training strip. Uh, you've bred uh, and owned both Brass Hat and Groupie Doll from very modest uh, breeding stock. Uh, talk about the whole mom and pop aspect and what it means to your family. Yeah, we um, yeah we did we did it all. I mean we we built our own hay. We we even raised tobacco. We raised cattle at one time. You know we the the horses was. That was what we were there for, but it's almost like we had to do everything else to get to that point because uh, we didn't have money, that kind of money to put in the horses. But, um, you know, I think as it, uh, you know, we've, we've, we've all done it, uh, my sisters and brother, and we all, we all worked at it. And now my children are working at it and helping on the farm. And my youngest is nine years old, and she, she'll take Brad's hat back and forth to the paddock every day now. <laughs> Speaking of Brass Hat, uh, how's the old boy doing? What's his uh, daily routine? Brass Hat's doing great. Uh, I love it. He's on the farm, so I get to see him every day. He, we, we all turn him out when we wean horses. He's kind of a babysitter and does really well with the babies. It's, uh, it's pretty neat to see. And I've been on him a few times and r- rode him around the farm and through the creek and through the woods, and he's really, really good riding horse for me um and so it's pretty exciting to see him out there and then when group comes home we turn around with him and they're their buddies so it's kind of it's oh, really wow. neat to see that you know i mean and people say why would you put her with brass hat he might kick her 
he wouldn't get, he wouldn't hurt anything like that. He is, he's a sweetheart, really. And you know, you've got to let him be horses, and and that's kind of how we always operated. But, you know, just you know, you, you're safe about it, but at the same time, you got another horses, and they want to be outside some. So I think that um, Brass is doing great. He really is. He's uh, he's really enjoying life right now. Uh Buff, it's it's a great story. We wish you all the best of luck going out to California in the Breeders' Cup with Groupie, and uh, we'll see you out there and say hi to your dad, and uh, we'll see you soon. Take care, Buff. Good luck. Thank you so much, and Steve. Thank you. Thank you both. Thanks for being with us. Take care. Uh, Speaking of the Breeders' Cup, uh, the juvenile divisions are shaping up into the classic battles of two armies, one from each coast. Dominated, of course, by the two dominant trainers in the country, Todd Pletcher and Bob Baffert. Steve, this is a uh, pretty classic war shaping up here. It needs music to go with it. You know, just, <laughs> just the sound of the names, Baffert versus Pletcher. I mean, it's, this is it. This is a classic east-west rivalry. The, the look ahead to next year's Kentucky Derby. And both horses have so much going for them. Uh, Todd Pletcher has got Shanghai Bobby, who's four for four, coming off a brilliant win in the Champagne. I mean, he's won the Hopeful and the Champagne, the two most prestigious two-year-old races in New York and and the two most historic races. He came home in the Champagne in 47 and four and beat what was supposed to be a very talented field and just drew off and won easily. But I mean, when a two-year-old comes home 47-4 going a flat mile, that's something pretty special. And you look at Baffert's horse, Power Broker, who started off his career as just an ordinary horse. I mean, he, would, he, he, he ran uh, okay over the, over the uh, poly track out there. He ran okay over the grass, but he couldn't break his maiden. And then puts him on the dirt for the first time in the front runner stakes, which uh, used to be the Norfolk. And the horse uh, looked like an absolute freak, destroying his field, uh, and some pretty good horses in there too, and just drawing off to win easily. So he's undefeated on the dirt. So we really don't know how good he is. I know Baffert's very high on him, and this should be quite a uh, quite a battle when these two meet. And it's going to be obviously over uh, over uh, Power Broker's home track, so that's going to give him a bit of an advantage. But it'll be uh, very very interesting and. And we also got an east-west uh, matchup versus uh, two very good fillies as well. Yeah, the juvenile fillies are the same story. You've got it. executive privilege. You know a horse is well meant when uh, Bob Baffert is willing to pay $650,000 for a, a daughter of first samurai. That, that doesn't happen every day, folks. Executive privilege is making that look like a steal at this point. She's undefeated under Baffert's tutelage. She's raring to go in the juvenile fillies. Pletcher's got the undefeated dreaming of Julia. Yes, she was put to the test in the Frisette. She only won by a smidge. But uh, that was a really nice filly that she beat. This is a daughter of AP and you know she's going to be primed and ready. So uh, could be the same duo. And Steve uh, Dick Mandela, who's no slouch in California Breeders Cups, has one in there also. Oh my goodness! Everybody's talking about uh, Beholder, who's, uh, who's who's she's going she's coming off a sprint. She can go in either the uh, the juvenile sprint race or she can stretch out. But she's She's coming off a 108 buyer, which is which is out, outrageous. So this field, and if you watch her race, I mean, she just tore through some incredibly fast fractions early, 44 and 56, and absolutely drew off on her own under you know under wraps. So who knows how good how good this filly is? And you know, you mentioned Dreaming of Julia only winning her race by a head. Let's remember too that the filly that she beat was coming off a maiden win. By 21 lengths, yeah. you don't yeah. see that very often too. And all Dreaming of Julia did before that was win both of her starts by a total of 27 and a quarter lengths. So we're talking about some very special two-year-old fillies this year. Yeah, these juvenile uh, divisions are very, very interesting this year. Probably more interesting than the classic, quite frankly. So don't uh, don't get there late, folks. Uh, don't turn on your uh, NBC Sports Network late. It's going to be a Pretty interesting. Breeders' Cup. 
Stephen, one of the most underreported stories of the year, Frank <laughs> Stronach is running for the Austrian parliament. This is not a joke. Uh, the perennial leading uh, North American breeder, owns Santa Anita, Gulfstream, Laurel. He's polling around 10% right now. And uh, he's running, ironically, on a platform of, uh, you know, getting rid of debt in the country. But uh, anyway, we, we wish Frank all of the best. And uh, rumor has it, if he uh, does win office in Parliament, uh, there will be a shopping center being built outside of the parliamentary building uh, soon after work. <laughs> Steve, anything on Frank? Well, you know, hey, listen. As weird as this is, give the guy credit for doing this at, at his age. Uh, you know, listen, you have to look at it in a, in a, uh, in a very light manner. Um, I, I think his slogan should be, the hills are alive with the sound of Stronic. You know, and this, is, and this, is only for, this is only for you Sound of Music fans. And then when he gets beat and he has to give his concession speech, he can always just get up there and say, so long, farewell, I'll be the same to you. Anyway, listen, I mean, you gotta, you got to embrace the silliness of it, so. I'm not embracing your singing voice, I'll tell you that right now. Hey, listen, that was more talking anyway. I could have done a lot worse. Speaking of uh, being embraced, Stable Boy, uh, wh what do you got going? Uh, what's going on with you? Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, <laughs> getting ready for Breeders' Cup, a vet convention. And we, we should point yeah, out that uh, for all you uh, for all your California fans uh, are going to be disappointed. You you will not be traveling to the Breeders' Cup. You'll be holding down the home fires here. I, I will not. May, I will may, be. May, covering... may I interject? May I interject and ask why? I will be covering the exciting world of the November sales, Steve. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well, my goodness. Yeah, they they come right up on the back of the Breeders' Cup. It's impossible to get back out here in time. So uh, well, uh, it's good to know Stable Boy is back anchoring the home uh, office, though. We'll, we'll be I there. think I, I, this is like finding out that Frankel's not coming. <laughs> That's right. Frankel, Painter, and Stable Boy, the three superstars, <laughs> not making it to the Breeders' Cup. Uh, uh, I wasn't aware of that. All right. Speaking of the Breeders' Cup, we are going to see you out there in two weeks. We'll be live on site at Santa Anita. Steve and I will be bringing you the latest news from there. That'll be coming at you on Tuesday, October 30th. Till then, we want to thank you, our viewers. We want to thank our sponsor, Darby Dan Farm. Congratulations to Darby Dan Farm. Yes. La Cloche, the sister to Winter Memories, the daughter of the great Memories of Silver, gets a graded stakes win at Belmont in the Athenia over the weekend. Great for the Darby Dan operation. Congratulations to them. Steve, Definitely. we'll see you in the Golden State. Yes, looking forward to it. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.